we'll kick off again uh, and we'll commence with questions from Senator Lionhelm. Ah, oh, yes, Minister. Um, uh, Mr Pratt has some additional information for Senator Pratt and the committee. Ah, oh, Secretary. Um, so, in relation to a few questions that uh, about 1800 respect, um, just a, a couple of comebacks. Uh, one is there are no male councillors answering calls on 1800 respect. Uh, and also we can confirm that uh, specialist gambling counsellors do not answer 1800 Thank respect you. calls. Thank you. Back to us on a, in a timely way on those matters. Thank Pleasure you very much. much. Senator Lionhelm. Right. Thank, Thank you, Chair. Um, I asked at the previous estimates some questions in relation to the Violence Against Women campaign. Um, I'm assuming I have the right people. At yes, the Senator. Table. Yes, thank you. Um, that, that campaign, and I asked in particular about the research that informed it. Uh, that research was undertaken by the TNS consultancy. And it stated, without giving any citations, and I quote here, there is strong community support for the cessation of extreme violence against women. A significant barrier to achieving this change, however, is low recognition of the heart of the issue and where it begins. There is a clear link between violence towards women and attitudes of disrespect <coughs> and gender inequality. At the last estimates I asked, in fact I put a notice on, uh, a question on notice for a citation about disrespect and gender inequality being the heart of the issue. The question, uh, I did ask it at the last estimates, was taken on notice. And in response I received uh, a, a reply in SQ 17 Dash 150, of, of which there are six paragraphs. Um, the first four paragraphs advised of ABS statistics indicating more partner violence against women than against men. And I'm assuming that the department is not intending to argue that these statistics are measures of disrespect or gender inequality, or show that disrespect and gender in inequity are at the heart of the issue. Am I right in that assumption? Manager, Communication Services Branch. Uh, Senator, the um, campaign is based on a range of research, including um, international and domestic research, um, including the World Health Organization, Preventing Intimate Partner and Sexual Violence Against Women, Taking Action and Generating Evidence, as well as the um, ANRO's research for the Australian Bureau of Statistics Personal Safety Survey. Um, a variety of these researchers, um, these research pieces go to um, one of the key um, elements that go towards violence against women is disrespectful behaviour and um, gender inequality, which is why the campaign takes a primary prevention approach to these issues in order to break the cycle of violence. Yes, OK. Well, you didn't quite answer my question, but anyway, you did refer to the WHO report, which, which you did mention in your answer, your written answer on notice, um, referred to the re WHO report. And it cites, uh, well, your answer cites uh, a study supporting violence against women as a consequence of gender inequality. Are you arguing that the WHO report indicates that of all the factors, Gender inequality is the heart of the issue. No, in the campaign we don't argue that gender inequality and disrespectful behaviour is at the heart of the issue. It is one of the contributing um, factors. And the COAG decision when the um, campaign was commissioned supported that premise. However, it's not the only contributing factor to violence against women. What else does the WHO report suggest um, uh, is is uh, responsible for violence against women. I actually don't have the full details of that report with me, Senator. I'd have to take that on notice. Well, could I suggest uh, uh, I might know the answer to that before you uh, before you need to take it on notice? It the WHO report lists individual factors: low income, low education, sexual abuse, parental violence, <coughs> antisocial personality, harmful use of alcohol, illicit drug use acceptance of violence, it lists relationship factors, multiple partners and fidelity, low resistance to peer pressure, and it lists community factors, weak community sanctions and poverty, and societal factors, traditional gender norms and social norms supportive of violence. 
So in, in none of those does it actually nominate uh, gender inequality as a key uh, contributor. Now, the sixth paragraph in your response refers to an unpublished 2007 paper by Michael Flood and, and also a report of a survey by Vic Health, Health, which was commissioned by your department with the lead author named as Anita Harris. Um, now, I'm assuming you are familiar with both of those. So the, the paper, the unpublished paper by Michael Flood, did it support your, the, uh, the contention by TNS Consultancy that uh, disrespect and gender inequality uh, were relative, more important contributors, or did it compare them to uh, other contributors like poverty, alcohol abuse and drug abuse? Senator, I'm not aware it gave it any um, greater import, importance in that research, but it is once again one of the contributing factors, which is why the campaign has focused on it. Did you have a copy of the, that 2007 paper by Flood um, when you prepared, prepared your response to me to my question on notice? My understanding is we did because it was part of the desktop analysis that was done in 2015. Can, are you able to provide a copy to the committee? I can take that on notice. Thank you. Um, and on the survey, um, did the survey compare the contribution of disrespect and gender inequality to violence against women against other factors like poverty, alcohol abuse and drug abuse? Sorry, Senator, are you referring to the ABS survey? No, the, uh, the Vic Health survey that you cited in your, in your response to my question on notice. Um, the the uh, lead author was named as Anita Harris. I'd have to take that on notice. I'd have to take that on notice. Um, uh, in fact, we found that um, the survey only mentioned, uh, only measured reported attitudes to violence. Um, so attitudes, in other words. So I don't think it substantiates the argument, but you can take it on notice uh, as to its uh, relative as to the, whether you think it determined or indicated any relative importance of those co contributors. Now, um, I'd like to go a little further into that survey. Um, that survey, which you cited as a, as a, as a source for, a reference source for, uh, and to underpin the, the Violence Against Women campaign, it states that it is an area of concern that only 60% of young people agree that violence against women is common. Um, so that raises the question, can you definitively say that violence against women is common? The research, um, we, the 2013 National Community Attitudes Survey found a strong relationship between attitudes to gender equality and attitudes in violence. And some of the research showed that one in four young people is prepared to excuse partner violence and one in five <coughs> believes there are circumstances in which a woman bears some responsibility for the violent behaviour. That research formed the basis of the primary prevention approach for the campaign um, when we targeted influences of 10 to 17 year old children. Yeah, okay. I guess the question though is, is, is violence against women common? And if you can't, if it's not common, and, and if uh, there's this perception that it isn't common, then you, you could hardly expect young people to say that it is. And, 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 and I mention that because the recent, most recent ABS personal safety survey indicates that 1.5% of women reported experiencing violence by a partner or ex-partner during the previous 12 months. So 1.5%, I mean, I suppose depends on your definition, but I'm not sure that that would qualify from my definition of common. Certainly more than is preferable, isn't it? Yeah, indeed. Indeed it is. I, where I'm not heading, I'm not going anywhere on this by suggesting violence against women is acceptable or desirable or, or anything other than uh, something to be avoided. But I am, what I am questioning is the commitment of uh, taxpayers' funds to a program for which uh, the, the suggestion was, as I raised last estimates, 
the fundamental assumption is there a clear link between violence towards women and attitudes of disrespect and gender inequality. Now, um, in, uh, there's a 2013 United Nations page, a quantitative study on male violence against women in Asia and the Pacific by Fulu et al. It indicated that low gender equitable attitudes were less important factors explaining intimate part of partner violence than nearly every other factor listed, including the number of lifetime sexual partners, childhood abuse or neglect, a lack of education, food insecurity, oppression and alcohol abuse. Do you consider this UN study to be a credible source? I'm not um, privy to the detail of that study, Senator, so I can't make comment on it. All right, I'd like you to take that on notice uh, and, uh, and, if you, and tell me how you, you regard that in terms of credibility relative to the other sources which you have relied on in which attitudes of disrespect and gender inequality were regarded as at least as important as other factors, if not more so. Now, the, the question of course is, if the United Nations quantitative study on male violence against women in Asia and the Pacific is an accurate reflection of the situation in Australia as well, then a policy response that focuses on disrespect and gender inequality and doesn't focus on the other factors that the UN study um, identified as, contrib as key contributors to, uh, to violence would be inappropriate. It would be misdirected, wouldn't it? I think, Senator, we're making an assumption. We have quite considerable evidence that um, supports this campaign. We haven't used the particular um, report that you're talking about, so I can't do a comparison. Um, but based on a COAG uh, agreement to this campaign, which is based on considerable evidence, both domestic and international, we have enough of a supporting basis for this campaign to go ahead. And the evalu evaluation of the campaign shows the success of the campaign and the fact that it actually has reached the primary target audience and has actually changed um, perspectives on the issue. And we, the traction that the campaign has got with only one phase of, of um, advertising is quite considerable. We've got 41 million views of the ad um, domestically. We've had um, the research all shows, shows that we've reached our target audience as predicted and we have 69% understanding of the messaging and people acting on it. We've had 450,000 visits to the website and over 20,000 downloads of material and we're now going into a phase to investigate how we extend that campaign and reach even further influences. All right, but that's based on the assumption that uh, domestic violence, to, uh, violence towards women is at, at, at the heart of domestic violence against women is disrespect and gender equality. So you've achieved you know, by those measures, uh, a degree of awareness, and presumably you you're consider that uh, indicators of success. It was how much more would the how much more would those figures how much higher would those figures be <coughs> if you had addressed the issues that the United Nations quantitative study found? Or equally, if not more, um, in fact, they said more uh, uh, important in as contributors to domestic violence. How much more successful could you have Senator, been? We can't possibly take a hypothetical thing that we didn't do and then have a look what it might have had an, no. an outcome. It's not possible to do yeah, that. It, no, I appreciate that. Uh, but I what, mean, I'm, I'm, what I'm suggesting to you is that uh, there, there is a danger, and I'm suspicious that uh, you have selectively taken the evidence rather than uh, taken it as a whole. And uh, uh, when Ms Bell has said there's a considerable amount of evidence, I hope you have given us the evidence, or given me the evidence, in response to my question at the last uh, estimates, in response and to my question on notice, if there is other evidence that I haven't received that, that underpins that, the basis of the, that campaign, I would like to see it. We Senator, have can, provided... can I say we will go and further explore whether there is any other source of evidence mm. that will... Uh, that was you, used for this. used. Yep, uh, that'd be good. I would like to know because what you've sent me so far does not um, do, do it justice, in my view, and I, su I suspect that the program is misdirected, and it could be more successful if it was redirected. 
Now, a final question, because uh, the chair is uh, going to wind me up in a moment. Um, uh, I'm just wondering if you, you agree that the literature on partner violence splits into two camps. That they are referred to as a patriarchal perspective and a family conflict perspective. Are you, is that a reasonable assessment? You're familiar with that, that idea? I'm sorry, Senator, I'm not. not. It hasn't okay. formed any of the part of the work we've done for the campaign. It may be in a program or policy. I might put a question on notice for you for that one. That might be a bit, a bit unfair. Okay. All right. I'll leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator Brian Helm. Um, look, Senator, if it's not here, I understand, Senator.